Happy Thursday, Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel coming at you. I previewed the last couple of days. I've went into the team numbers for Tennessee and Creighton and their losses versus their season in general. Uh, this morning, I released a video that talked about the individual players, the individual players for Creighton, the individual players for Tennessee, their losses versus their season. What I was looking for was trends and all that. I was looking for trends. I was looking where advantages may be on that. And, you know, I, I saw some things that were concerning, but I also saw some things that I like in that as well. And uh, when I get into this matchup, I look at this one. The title of this one is Keys to Victory. And then we'll give a prediction tonight as well. And I think some of you have assumed my prediction up to this point. But, uh, you know, what I've broken down to this point is factual. It's not opinion. It's facts. I sat down for probably three to four hours and actually factored up all of these stats for these teams. I factored them in. I averaged up in their losses. I didn't average up their victories or for their season. I took what was there for me. But in losses, as I couldn't find anything that had already factored that up. So I did it myself. I took losses. I took all these statistics, points per game rebounds, assists, turnovers, free throws, and I tried to see what, and turnovers, I tried to see what I could find that stood out in this game. For me, what stands out for Creighton, number one, they're good. This is a good team. Tennessee's playing tomorrow night. Make no mistake about it. I've seen some say, well, the Big East is not the SEC. There's probably Big East people going to say, yeah, the SEC is not the Big East. We've sat here and talked about how good the SEC is this year. They have two teams in the Sweet 16. Most of their teams bowed out in weekend number one, okay? Day number one that they played, or day number two, whichever one it was. Texas A&M took Houston down to the wire, almost, almost got to the Sweet 16, took them to overtime. Alabama, Tennessee, they're holding the banner for the SEC right now. Auburn. Kentucky, Mississippi State, you know, I could go on and on. I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. South Carolina, they all bowed out early. How can we sit here and still say the SEC was the best conference this year when and when it mattered, they bowed out? Tennessee and Alabama are still standing. Neither one of them played their best game in the Sweet 16, yet they still advance. Alabama against Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon gave them a run for a while. They stepped up when it mattered. Tennessee offensively did not play well. They played, that was one of their worst offensive games of the year. They still advance. You guys listen to this and me, we all know last year that team goes to the house. That team, previous teams of Tennessee go to the house on an offensive night like that. This one doesn't. That gives me confidence. So getting into this game, where does Creighton have advantages? Tennessee's not going to run the paint in this game. If they do, it's going to be a surprise. All right. Creighton does not foul. They don't foul often. I've looked in their losses and other, maybe in some of their uh, wins, they fouled out in their losses. They gave up minimal free throw attempts on the season. I talked about this number on it with free throws. They gave up in losses. This is not for the season losses. They only gave up 87 free throw attempts. That's with them getting beat. They took 129. They had 42 more attempts. Tennessee can't go into this game being bullheaded and thinking, we're going to go at Creighton and try to get to the line. If they have success, there's a small percentage chance that they do in this game. What's your? If you're Tennessee, you're going to have to hit the mid-range jumper. You're going to have to make your threes. You're going to have to be at your average or above on that tomorrow night because this is just a team that doesn't foul. They play good defense. Ken Palm has them 11th in the country. Their defensive efficiency is not what Tennessee's is, but it's good. All right, it is good. So, you know, Tennessee's going to have to make shots tomorrow night. Will they shoot like they did against Texas? I hope not, but... You know, I've had some, well, they're not going to shoot that way against Texas. They just did it. 
Okay, so how do we know they won't do it again? We don't think they will because that performance has not happened often. But there's always that chance it could happen. If it happens once, it can happen again. All right. So you have to factor in worst case versus best case. And you're hoping that obviously you're hoping best case. But if best case isn't going to happen, you're hoping for somewhere in between. And you're definitely hoping that worst case does not happen. So that's Creighton's game. You're not going to get to the free throw line on this guy, on these guys. So where you have to match them, don't let them get to the free throw line. Because in Tennessee's losses, and I talked about this and I put it together on my spreadsheet, they gave up 218 free throw attempts versus taking 146. That's a significant difference from what Creighton is allowing. So teams are able to drive and get to the line on Tennessee where they have not been able to do that with Creighton. You can't sit here and be bullheaded about it and say, well, by God, Tennessee's going to do it tomorrow night. No. You can't factor that, all right? Do you want to? Yes, absolutely. You're hoping that pace picks up, which will favor Tennessee. Tennessee, in these games where teams have liked to pick up the pace, it's favored them. But these Alabamas, Kentuckys, Floridas, these teams that like to play at pace, don't play the defense that Creighton does. And Creighton's basically a six-man team. But let me tell you, four of them are really good. And Mason Miller, the fifth guy, can shoot to three. He shot over 40% from three this year. So make no mistake about it. This is a strong team. This is a very good team. Where I have found that it favors Tennessee, rebounding could go either way tomorrow night. Creighton's not a great offensive rebounding team. All right? They're just not. Tennessee cannot allow them to be tomorrow night. Um your guys have to play their game. I said it last, or I said it this morning. I actually recorded the video last night, but I said it this morning. My defensive lineup, I let Dalton Connect grade uh, guard Mason Miller. I let Ziegler guard Ashworth. I'm putting a common, I'm putting Vescovy on Trey Alexander. Baylor Shearman, who's up for the Julius Irvin Award, which is, I'm pretty sure, the player of the year, I'm guessing. He and Connect are two of the five finalists. So this guy can play. All right, he's around 18, over 18 points per game, over nine point rebounds per game. I'm putting Josiah Jordan-James, and I'm putting Jemai Meshack. If you're, some of these guys are not hitting it offensively, I'm immediately, if I'm Rick Barnes, I'm putting Jemai Meshack in to do his thing because he could do it, all right? He's one of the best, if not the best defensive player in the whole country. Funny thing to me is Zakai Ziegler won SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He's not the best defensive player on his team. It's Jemai Meshack. They've said it. This, this is what's helped make Dalton Connect better is going against Jemai Meshack every day. If the shots are not falling for some guys, Meshack should be in early and often, moving forward, and on Baylor Shearman, who is uh, Creighton's best player. But I don't say that lightly because they have four really, really good players. And, um, you know, I, I saw somebody talking about the shape they're in. You have to be in that shape to play it. Now, if you're Tennessee, you've got to play physical tomorrow night. You have to, all right? That's something that has stood out. San Diego State last year in the Sweet 16, um, or it was in the Sweet 16 lead. I can't remember off the top of my head, and I do not have it pulled up, and I'm not going to pull it up. But San Diego State played physical, and they prevailed with it. Tennessee has to dip into their repertoire of physicality tomorrow night. I don't really think they've been that physical this year. I feel like they've been out physical numerous times. They're going to have to come up with it tomorrow night. But um, So that rebounding battle is there to be had. It's also there for Creighton to have as well. That could be a 50-50 on it. Where Tennessee can excel and pick up points. I don't think they're going to pick them up to free throw line. If they do, it will surprise me on it. Shooting-wise, Creighton is a better shooting team statistically on this, all right? Stats are stats. Can we throw them out the window at some point? Yeah, we can. But we also, if we look at a body of work, they are what they are. Here's a body of work I have for you that you're going to like. Tennessee forces a lot more turnovers than Creighton does. Tennessee makes things happen. Uh, Assists are similar. That turnover difference, though. Creighton is one of, if not the lowest rated 
statistical teams in the country in terms of forcing turnovers. Tennessee's good at it. If you double them up on the forcing there's, there's uh, I can't even speak. If you double them up in forcing those turnovers, um, that could be your big advantage. That could be a big double-digit advantage right there. That could factor in Tennessee's hands. And the last thing, I've been reading some articles based on uh, from the Creighton perspective, which is pretty interesting. And they're they're even saying in their articles, Creighton has not faced a defensive team with Tennessee all year long. So if you're Tennessee tomorrow night, your average on the year is around 31% for three points. If you hold Creighton to that, you've got to like your chances on that. You allow them to get out and go tomorrow night because their percentage for the year for Creighton is 40, uh, I'm sorry, 36.6 and losses 28.9 on it. Tennessee giving up for the year from their perspective is um, 30.9. All right. So if you can hold Creighton to that, your percentage, if you're Tennessee for threes on the year is 33.9 on the year. If you're around that average, 35, give or take, you hold Creighton around 30, you're going to have a good chance to win this ball game tomorrow night. And that turnover margin, in these losses, some of these guys are turn they're turnover prone. All right. Not like five to ten or nothing, but two to three, that's a pretty drastic amount, in my opinion, on it. So keys to victory for me, I'm gonna narrow it down. Hold Creighton to your average that you're giving up in three points. 30, 31%. Okay. In their losses, they've got some pretty hideous numbers from three point range. They had two or their upper 30s and 40s. The rest of them, they're under 30%. You can do that. It's going to be a good night for you. Rebounds. Make it even. Worst case, make it even on it. If you allow Creighton to control the boards, you're going to be in trouble tomorrow night, especially if you allow them to get in and go outside of their norm and win the offensive rebounding game. Keep that statistic turnovers to assist ratio in check. You do that. That could be potentially a double-digit advantage. The more I go into this, now, would it surprise me if Creighton wins tomorrow? No, no not at all. This is a very good team. They're not a clown show, all right? Um, I'm hoping Tennessee, you shouldn't underestimate it. If Tennessee comes and underestimates this team, they get, deserve to go to the house for that. If you come in and you're not fired up tomorrow night, you're thinking you're going to waltz through Creighton, you deserve to be heading to that uh, airport tomorrow night. But I think this Tennessee team's focused, all right? Mississippi State woke them up, all right? Last weekend, they did not play well, and they prevailed on this. I'm going to go in this game. One man, Frank Rock's fearless prediction tomorrow night, and I'm going to go double digits just to uh, spite somebody told me, well, who cares about that? Anyhow, I'm going Tennessee 76. Creighton, 65 tomorrow night. Am I crazy? Absolutely. Do I think it's a crazy prediction? Maybe, maybe not. All right. But I feel it's going one of two ways. Either Tennessee's going to do their thing and win comfortably, or Creighton's going to win this ballgame. But I'm going to go with Tennessee's physicality and their defensive demeanor is going to be the difference tomorrow night. Okay. Creighton goes six deep. That's got to take a toll at some point, even though four of those six are really good. Two of them, they contribute. Not What they bring to the table is pretty nice. Tennessee 76, Creighton 65. Tennessee, for the second time in school history, is rolling on to the Elite Eight where they will await either, or they won't be awaiting, somebody will be awaiting them, either Purdue or Gonzaga. That's going to be a fascinating battle as well. I'm still kind of up in the air whether I'll be live tomorrow night or not. I do have a uh, a previous engagement tomorrow night, and where it's out of town, it's almost a couple hours away, but I'm hoping I'll be back by that time. And uh, I'm going to say let's – I'm actually not going to say because I don't want to disappoint. My hope is I'll be going live tomorrow night. It's going to depend on how the time goes. If I'm not back by the end of the game, obviously I won't. If I am, I will. I'll post it. 
you know, make sure you follow me on uh, definitely Twitter at House of Orange TN. And I'll have a post I'll update on there as well based on my time frame on it. I'm hoping I'll be able to get back and get live with you. But, uh, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share this out. Make sure if you haven't already, you subscri uh, subscribe to the channel. My name's Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel. As always, baby, go Vols. Thank <laughs> you.